Hello everyone, I'm Ed with iCraft. I'm the Chief Education Officer and Master Technician. Today, we're gonna to show you how to take the iPod Touch 5th generation from this to this, using nothing but our do-it-yourself toolkit. Let's do it. Here we have a 32 gig iPod Touch 5th generation. We're going to go ahead and replace the screen. As you can see, it's nice and shattered. One of the first things we always want to do is inspect every part of the device to make sure it functions. To start off, I'm going to plug it in, make sure we get the charging symbol. The battery should turn green, and we should see a lightning bolt. I'll test the home button, make sure it pops up. Test the front and rear camera and record a video to test the microphone. Testing one, two, three, three, two. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. And then go ahead and play that back. Okay, so the loudspeaker works at the same time. I'm going to move the volume up and down to make sure that it functions. Now that I'm satisfied that everything on here functions, I'm going to go ahead and power the device down by pressing and holding the power button until I get the slide to power off. You'll see the swirl on the screen. When that disappears, the device is actually powered off. Go ahead and unplug your charger. Now that the device is safely powered off, we're going to remove the screen. The screen is held in place with strips of adhesive on the right and left side of the home button and then clipped along the sides. So using a heat gun, we're going to heat up this lower section of the screen to make the adhesive nice and loose. Once that's heated up, and just enough to where you can just barely touch it, that'll be sufficient. Now there are several ways of opening this up. Within the kit that you purchased comes a set of tools. In the tools is a nylon spudger and a suction cup. If you have an Isesmo, you could also use that. Or if you have the IsClack, you can use that as well. The IsClack is a pair of suction cups that go over and under the screen and you suction it down and lift and set the screen off. But since most people have this, this is what we're going to use for the video. So we're going to heat up the screen so all the adhesive is the left and right of the home button located here. So this is where we're going to focus with our hot air or hair dryer. Just warm enough so we can get that adhesive loose. You're going to apply enough heat just to where you can barely touch it. So I got my hot air gun. And we're going to heat up this area of the screen. You want to be careful, you don't want to heat it up too much because the button's made of plastic and you want to damage the home button. Okay, so I heat it up enough. Because the screen is so badly cracked, I'm going to put a piece of tape on here to help me get suction. So I'm going to take the suction cup that was included in the kit press it about where the home button would be and lift it just enough to get down so you get down in here Well, since that didn't work, then we're going to use a tool kind of like the Incesmo to get between the frame and the plastic here to get underneath. Just enough to break the adhesive, get the screen partially lifted, and then and gently take like the Incesmo and get it in 
break that adhesive loose just enough to get the nylon spudger in. Let's break the screen loose from the adhesive. Now a screen badly shattered like this one, it'll break into a bunch of pieces. Once I have that separated, then I can start using the nylon spudger to unclip the sides. Just like that. And just enough to be able to get the screen lifted. Now part of this thin bezel will break on you and that's no big deal. It happens. You'll be able to pull it out without a problem. As you can see here, the adhesive here is left located left and right. And then you have the home button tactile switch right there. So we don't want to damage that. So once this open, we want to start removing all the screws on the thermal plate. Now I'm going to use my screw map here, which outlines where all my screw locations are. To keep them well organized. It's color coded so you know the order in which to take them out in. So first we're going to take all the blue screws out which are located here, here, and here. First off, I've got to dig this piece of bezel out, which comes out simply just by poking it up. Now that all the plastic bezel's out, I'm going to go ahead and use the Phillips head screwdriver in my kit and start removing the screws. As I remove each screw, I'm going to set it over the blue area of my screw map so that I keep them well organized and I know exactly where they came from. Not all the screws are the same size and length, so that's why it's important to keep the, your screws well organized. Now according to my screw map, all my blue screws are removed, so now I can take out this thermal plate. The thermal plate comes out really easy. You just slide it toward the end and lift up just like that, and then we'll start lifting. Then you'll notice the home button flex cable here is attached to the plate, so we want to very cautiously lift that up and separate it, the adhesive from the thermal plate without tearing it. Now that the home button flex cable is lifted right here, then I can go ahead and guide this plate out and make sure the home button flex passes through the opening here in the plate. Go ahead and set the thermal plate aside. Now, if this home button is damaged, it can be an expensive repair because this is part of the speaker, charging port, flex cable, which runs under the battery and is soldered to the logic board. So our next step, according to my screw map, is to remove the green screws, which are these three located on the logic board. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Now that those screws are removed, next we're going to remove the screws holding in the Wi-Fi cable antenna, which is located right here. So I'm just going to fold my screen over just like this to expose my three screws. Now the Wi-Fi cable is located here.
Now this Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna is held into the frame with a piece of double-sided foam which has adhesive on it. So you want to gently take the flat end of the nylon spudger and get underneath and separate the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna from the foam so that it can gently slip forward. Let's go ahead and fold our screen over. I'm going to use the pointy end of my nylon spudger and I'm going to gently lift my logic board upward just like that. Now if you're working on a 16 gig you're not going to have to worry about the rear facing camera which is located right here. But since this is a 32 gig, we have that. So I'm going to take my nylon spudger and very gently peel the camera up as it's only held in with a little bit of adhesive. And we do this so we have enough room to lift the logic board without having to disconnect the cable safely. All right, so here we have the digitizer, which is this long silver piece right here. We're going to take the pointed end of the nylon spudger very carefully, get just underneath the shelf, and disconnect. The next one is the LCD, which is located right here in the center. And do the same thing. Take the spudger very carefully, disconnect, just like that. Now this cable here is a power and audio cable. If that comes disconnected, it's no big deal. We can easily reconnect it. By disconnecting it, it actually gives you more room to work in because this is a very tight spot. My display assembly is now free, so I just have to gently lift the front facing camera out of the screen with my nylon spudger. Once my camera is free, then I can separate the two. Now don't throw away your screen yet, because we do have to remove the home button from the original display over to the new display. So now that we've um, taken the new digitizer out of the package. We're going to go ahead and move the home button from the original display assembly using the flat end of the nylon spudger. I'm going to come underneath and push upward to break that adhesive seal and then gently peel up the home button off. And then we're going to take the new display assembly and set the home button inside there so that it's centered. Just like that. Turn over to make sure that the square on the home button is square with our screen. So now we're ready to place the new display assembly back onto the logic board. Now when you connect the new display assembly to the logic board, you're going to keep the two lengthwise like this. One of the things that you want to do is match the folds between the new and the old. As you can see, the digitizer is almost folded all the way over on itself and same with the LCD. So I'm going to take the new one, I'm going to fold over the digitizer over so that it matches, and then I'm going to take the LCD and fold it over so that it matches. You'll find that this will make it a lot easier to reconnect it to the logic board when the pre-folds are there. So I'm going to take them and match them up just like that. And make sure that your front camera is not in your way. For the purpose of the video, I disconnected the power and audio control cable, which is this cable right here. The LCD is this connection, 
and the digitizer is this connection here. Now when you connect these, you're going to want to connect the LCD first by wrapping it around the logic board, line it up, and once it's lined up, you go ahead and press so you feel it click, and you'll feel like a double click so that you know that it's connected. So the next one we're going to go to is the digitizer connection here, and we're going to do the same thing. You want to align the connection. Once it's aligned, you'll press and you'll feel it double snap into place. And you should hear an audible snap so you know you're in the correct position. Now the power and volume flex is a small cable here. Now if this disconnect on you, it's real simple to realign just right here onto the small connector. So we're going to line it here and press it back into place. Okay, now that it's aligned, we'll press it back down in place just like that and you should feel that snap. Now all three connectors are now attached to the logic board. Now that those are connected, we're going to go ahead and lay the logic board back down and we want to set the rear camera back into place and it's just as simple as lining it back in and pressing down so that it drops inside its housing. But before we do this, we want to make sure there's no dust or debris has landed between the camera and the lens right there. Give it a good cleaning and then take in your camera and lift it up and put it into place just like that. It'll fit snugly down and firm and then turn it over and you'll see the lens is now flush against the glass in the back. Now we're going to go ahead and place the three screws for the Wi-Fi back into place. Now the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna has also got these little holes right here that will drop down onto plastic alignment pins to make sure it's in the proper location. And once those drop into the place, your three holes for your screws will properly line up. So I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver, place those screws back in, Then I'm going to take the three screws that hold the logic board in place and place them back in. Be careful not to over tighten these screws as they thread into an aluminum housing. So now that I've got all those screws back in, the logic board will be flush in the frame, and so will the Wi-Fi. Now from here, we want to go ahead and power up and test to make sure all our connections are done correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off this outer layer of the screen protector and go ahead and turn it on so we can test the device. Once the device is booted up, we're going to go ahead and slide to open, grab an icon by placing your finger on the icon till they start jiggling, and grab it and move it up and down all over the screen. The icon should not drop. If it drops, that could indicate a problem with your connection or possibly a damaged flex cable. So once you're satisfied, that the icon didn't drop, 
then we'll go ahead and power the device back down and continue the assembly. Now that we have the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the antenna and the logic board screwed in, we're going to replace the mid plate back into place. Now one thing you want to make sure is make sure that your front camera is leaning over so that the thermal plate doesn't trap the camera underneath. So we're going to take your mid plate, we're going to pass the home button flex cable through the opening in the mid plate just like so. So it should be sticking out. We're going to go ahead and line the bottom here and then press the mid plate back down into place and should easily snap back into place. If it's not dropping into place, you may have something sitting in between it, like a piece of glass or dirt, so you want to check that. Don't force this down because you could puncture the battery, which won't be good. So our next step is going to put all these screws surrounding the thermal plate and mid plate back in and we'll put it in place. It comes all the way around. There is a total of four, six, eight, ten, twelve screws. Now, while you're putting these screws in, you don't want to over tighten them. You just want to put them in enough to where they stop. Because the frame is made out of aluminum, you can easily strip them out. And it'll make it very difficult if you ever have to remove. Now that all the mid plate screws are in place, all the way around, then I'm going to go ahead and set the home button, flex cable back down. Now, at the bottom here, you're going to notice the two small pins, holes, <laughs> that align with the two holes in the thermal plate. So we want to set this down so that the hole in the flex cable aligns with the holes in the thermal plate. Just like so. Next, we're going to go ahead and very carefully peel off the anti-static protective cover from the underside of the screen. Just like that. We're going to take the front facing camera here. We're going to place it into the front facing camera socket in the screen and very gently Keeping our finger here, we're going to hold the camera in place and set this down. Now the top of the screen here has these brackets and a metal plate here that fits inside the frame. This keeps the top end of the screen secure inside and prevents it from popping out. So we're going to go ahead and take this again at a nice angle, about 20 degrees, and very gently close it down. We're going to press the bottom back into place, and then run your fingers up the left and right side until the screen is snapped. Should be nice and flush all along the frame. Now that that's done, we're going to power it on and retest everything. So now that we've powered it back up and we're at the home screen, we're going to run through a few tests to make sure that this repair was successful. First, we're going to double tap the home button, the screen should pop up. Next, we're going to grab an icon to the get all shaky, and then we're going to move it everywhere on the screen and the icon should not drop. Make sure that it goes off page. 
and then back on page. This way we've tested every section of the digitizer and we're happy that it's working. Lastly, we're going to do the camera check. So we'll do the rear camera, flip it over to the front camera, and then make a video recording test the microphone. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Play it back. There we go. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. Check, make sure our volume up and volume down are functioning. And we heard the audio, so we know the speaker works. Last thing, we want to plug in a charging cable. And again, make sure we have the green battery and the lightning bolt. There we go. We've successfully repaired it. Thanks for watching the iPod Touch 5th generation video. Remember to go to iCrack.com for all your iPhone, iPod, and iPad needs.